Welcome, baseball fans, to week three of State of MLB's Power Rankings. Let's let the debate begin. Coming in, number 30, the St. Louis Cardinals. Same spot as last week, but this time it's because they didn't play any games. Last week it was because the few games they played, they lost, which looked worse than Miami and Philadelphia not even playing any games. But therefore, this week, with them being the only team that played no games the whole week, leaves them out of spot 30. Unfortunately, they played the fewest games of anybody in the league at this point. And maybe when they start playing some games, they'll turn things around. But in the meantime, there's nothing to rate them upon. Nothing to compare them against. Speaking of something to compare them against, the team with the worst week, going 1-6, the Pittsburgh Pirates, has been acting like and playing like a doormat to the league. And that is what you get for acting like a doormat for uh, Pittsburgh, number 29. Coming in, number 20, a little bit of a disappointment for the Washington Nationals. They started slow last year, but in a 60-game season, you can't afford to start slow. We're going to turn, it on, turn it on the engines. When there's 15 games left, it's too late then. You know, shape up or ship out, Washington. You won the World Series. I'm not expecting you to be able to rebound and win the, champion, the division again, but at least show some face here. Right now, you're underperforming. You see, you really are. You dropped 10 spot from 18 to 28. You, know, you can do a lot better than this. You really can. You've got 40 games against your division. Make something happen. Coming in number 27, the Philadelphia Phillies return to action. And they do so by taking splitting with the New York Yankees, who were ranked number one last week. They take the New York Yankees' seven game win streak and pff, split the series with them. Then the, Phil the uh, Phillies go and play Atlanta, splitting that series. It's not overly impressive to go 3 and 3, but the teams you played against were ranked number one and five last week. Not too shabby, Philadelphia. Keep up the good work, and you'll slowly rise up the chain here. Coming in, number 20, a sleeper team with Randon and Madden. I thought we were going to do better than they were. They've been underperforming this year, and they had a rough week going 2-4 and four between Seattle and Texas. And they, can, they certainly can do better than that, and I'm expecting better out of them. Out of them. Well, they're going to be sitting home watching game, games on the TV with the rest of the league. Coming in, number 25, a team that... I didn't really expect a whole lot from. They have a young team. The team is still developing. They're a few years away from contention. So the fact that they're down this far is not really too much of a surprise. They did drop a whole lot, going from 70 to 25, after dropping 2 out of 3 from Atlanta, and they dropped 2 out of 3 from Boston. Having a 2 or 4 week is just. It's not pretty. It's not fun to watch. Coming in at number 24, the Seattle Mariners. Going 2-5, and five, having a really, really rough week between the LA Angels and the Colorado Rockies. They dropped from 13th to 24th. And these are the kind of lovable losers that you Seattle fans are used to. They always struggle, and they... Uh, and you have high hopes for them, they never come through for you. Unfortunately, ask any Seattle fan, really. As some the team, they're like the lovable losers. Like the New York Mets in New York are considered the lovable losers. Everyone loves them, everyone roots for them, everyone hopes for the best. But every time they do well, they find a way. You know what I mean? Coming in at number 23, the Houston Astros are having quite a down year. Now, it's speculative as to why that might be. They have most of their core, and losing just Garrett Cole is not going to sink a team this far. It might hurt with a few wins, but got to think about it. Garrett Cole has only pitched three, four games for the New York Yankees this season. Yes, they were all wins, granted, but you're talking about out of 15 games, that is only a few games. What have they been doing during their 15-game stretch? Not a whole lot. Now, it's spe one could speculate that maybe they're having a down year because they lost their manager, they lost their GM, they have Dusty Baker in here, uh, which is going to keep them honest, and they don't have access to the replay room. Do you think that had anything to do with it after having miraculous last few years, 17, 18, and 19, to all of a sudden having a down year when that's not available to them? I wonder. Leave your comments in the section below. Let me know what you think. Do you think getting caught has anything to do with your down year, or do you think there are other factors involved? Let me know what your thoughts are on that.
coming in number 22, your Milwaukee Brewers. After splitting with Chicago and dropping two out of three to Cincinnati, they end up with a three or four week, which is not horribly great. And it cost them to drop eight spots from 16 to 22. They have a lot of potential, it's up to, after, especially after they went to the wild card game against Washington. It's, it's up to them to make something happen out of that. Coming in at 21, the Arizona Diamondbacks having a very average week. Now granted, they took two out of three from Houston, but then they dropped two out of three to a much stronger or playing better team in San Diego. Giving them an average week puts, lets them uh, rise, unfortunately, to 21 from 26 from last week. I was, when, when they brought Bumgarner in, I thought hopefully they might spark a few things. Bumgarner is past his prime. He's an aged player. But you also have Robbie Ray and other players in there. I was hoping for better three and 3-3, three, but we'll see what happens in future weeks. Coming in at number 19, a team that I feel is underperforming to their potential are the Texas Rangers. They split their week, drop into to Oakland, then sweep in LA. At the same time, it's a team with which I think has more potential than they've shown so far. We'll see if they're able to unlock it, but they're a team that I didn't pay a sleeper, but I could very well see them a sleeper. The surprising area of turning some heads. They haven't done it yet, but there's still time. Only one fourth through the season. Coming in number 19, after losing a, a bunch of key players in Martin Mookie Betts and David Price, and losing your manager in Alex Cora, I expected them to have a down year. The fact that they're up this far is a credit to them. The fact they've been able to rebound despite those significant losses to the roster. Having gone to splitting from Tampa and taking two guys from Toronto, these are divisional rivals. You're getting 40 games against them. You still have to hold your own against your division if you want to make the playoffs. Now, granted, the only top 15, 16 teams are going to make the playoffs, and I don't have Boston as one of those teams, but at least they're holding their own against their own division. Coming in at number 18, your San Francisco Giants. The Giants. Uh, went two and five this week. This is a gift that they're this this high, despite having a two and five week. Part of that is the fact that they got trumped by or thumped by the Rockies and Dodgers, both teams that were ranked six and two last week. They fell seven spots, basically just couldn't hold their own. These are also both divisional rivals. So when you do two and five against your division, you're throwing away valuable games to contend with. And so, it's a gift that you're this high. Coming in at number 17, your Baltimore Orioles. A surprise team this year. They came in the Miami series coming off the COVID restrictions with a winning record. Then they get scrapped out of four games from Miami. Then they go and take two games from Washington. Going, having a two, a two and, or a, um, Two or four a week isn't great, but at the same time, they're in second place of the American League East. Between Boston, New York, Tampa, and everybody there, you're in second place. Tip your hat, clap your hands. They are off to a surprisingly good spot. Despite that, they still fall eight spots because you're still underperformed this week. So... We'll see what happens as they go forward, but I'm still impressed with how they started their season so far. Uh, these, coming in at 16, these Cincinnati Reds. Dropping six spots after going 3-4 and four this week. They go in against a non-division rival in the Cleveland Indians and drop 3 out of 4, but then they rebound by taking 2 out of 3 from division rival Milwaukee. This is a team with which I thought that maybe with a shortened season, with the, with the ability to uh, leverage their bullpen, they might do better than they've been doing. So far, they've been underperforming, in my opinion. They've been playing very average ball, which is more or less what they did last year. I was hoping for the better out of them, but we'll see what happens as the weeks continue going forth. They're only one fourth through the season, and while it's important they got to a good start, a lot of these teams haven't really. Sure, your top ten are teams you did, and they are contending for divisions and playoff hopes and everything. Here, you know you're going to get a bunch of wild cards and teams that may not even deserve to be in the playoffs. Still an opportunity, Cincinnati, to try and get in there because once you're in there, the rest doesn't matter. Coming in, number 15, one of those teams that was pegged to be a doormat and help give 
free games to other teams have actually come out and done well. Granted, this week they only went 4-3, and three, and they dropped 3 out of 4 to Chicago, but here's where I give them their biggest acclaim. They rise a spot because of this. They took on Mighty Casey and swept the Minnesota Twins. You know that little story of Mighty Casey? A uh, big power bat, everyone's hoo ha in the stands and everything. And then, of course, obviously in the story, he strikes out. But they put so much fanfare over how powerful of a hitter Mighty Casey was. And fundamentally, Minnesota Twins have been absolutely powerhouses with the bat, with winning games. Last year, I got a lot of fans pissed off at me that they weren't number one. And I said, hey, let's see what we do this week. And then look what happened. Kansas City says, hi, Minnesota, we're division rivals and we just swept your butt. <laughs> and therefore, they get a lot of credit and they rise eight spots. Coming in at number 14, the New York Mets. Granted, not an overly impressive week, but going 2-4 and four is better than a lot of teams did this week. You went your split Washington and then you took 2 by 3 from Miami. Not too shabby on the Miami side there, especially considering Miami started out coming out of this by sweeping Baltimore. You then take care of Miami uh, yourself, taking two out of three from them, and you end up finishing the week with a 4-2 record on this week alone. That allows you to rise 10 spots from 24 to 14. Well done. Let's see what you can do going forward. Coming in at number 13, your Chicago White Sox. Falling six spots after having a three or four week, split with Milwaukee, and then dropped two out of three from, from Cleveland. Considering the fact that they reloaded over the week, over the uh, massively over the offseason, I have pegged them to be a sleeper team. At the same time, the last time that this team massively reloaded was, to, was Toronto, and they didn't really kick into high gear towards the end of the season. This is not a 162 game season, uh, Chicago. You don't have a lot of time to play around here. We'll see if they kick it in the second half. You're getting there quickly. We're halfway, th we're quarter way through, and you've only got like a week or two before you're halfway through. So we'll see what happens with Chicago. Coming in at number 12, the other team I was pegged to be a doormat like Kansas City and give free wins to other teams, the Detroit Tigers have risen three spots because fundamentally, while they lost one of their series due to the infections, and they swept a team that is, has been an outright doormat to the rest of the league in the Pittsburgh Pirates. Finally, the fact that they actually they, they, they did win the games, okay? You ha instead of taking one out, of, one out of three or two out of three, you just swept them. And you did what you had to do to go undefeated this week. Granted, it's only three games. Granted, it's only against 27 ranked Pittsburgh of last week, but you still won the games. Therefore, you get, by, by virtue of winning the games you're supposed to win, you get to rise three spots. Coming in at number 11, your Tampa Bay Rays. Now, here's a story of a team that really made great face this week. Sure, they only split against Boston going one-on-one, -on -one, but here's the thing. New York was 7-0. Undefeated last week, they they have home field advantage, but they still took three out of four from number one ranked New York Yankees. Top of the, plus saving face against the Boston Red Sox, both division arrivals come four two against your division. They're not in second place yet, but they had a very strong week, and for that I give them kudos, and that has a lot to do with why they rose eleven spots from twenty two. To 11. Now, let's get into the fun of things. Our top 10. Who are our powerhouses? Who are our true contenders? Let's see here. It's only a quarter of the way through, so this can change the rest of the season. And I'm kind of expecting it will. But I have to give props to the Miami Marlins after, after being out for a whole week last week and playing no games and being down 28 spot. They rise massively, 18 spots, by coming out of the gate hard, taking on a Baltimore Orioles team that had a winning record at the time, sweeping them four straight games, then taking on the New York Mets, and they only took two out of three, or one out of three of the games, but they had a strong performance. They, they had a four and one, a four and two week. They did a great job, and therefore, they deserve 
They've earned the right to be in the top 10 for this week at least. Coming in, number 9, your San Diego Padres had a very average week. But at the same time, they had an average week because they ran into a brick wall in the Los Angeles Dodgers. They did well last week. They were number nine, number eight. And then they took two out of three. They were even by taking two out of three from Arizona, a divisional rival. As such, they only fall one spot. Now, coming in number eight, a fall from grace. The New York Yankees coming off an undefeated 7 0 week. Then, dropped. Three out of four to division rival Tampa Bay Rays. And for that, you know, you laid an egg, you had an opportunity, you had leads, you even got shut out once. And when you let the Tampa Bay Rays, a division rival, walk all over you, that's what happens to you, Yankees. Shame on you. Shame on you. And as a Yankees fan, I have the right to, to rag on them a little bit. They come out, they split with Philadelphia, and then they just get their butts handed to them by Tampa Bay. For that, I give credit to the Rays. And if they had, were in a better position before that series began, they'd probably be even higher right now. However, at the same time, that butt whooping by the Rays absolutely deserves you a drop of seven, seven rankings. Now, I'm about to go here. A whole lot of sneers, jars, complaints, and, and everything under the sun. Because guess who comes in at number seven? Your powerhouse, Minnesota Twins. Last week I took a lot of heat that they were number one. And technically, I couldn't justify doing that when New York had gone 7-0. This week, however, they've leapfrogged New York after their fall from Greece. And... I would like to give Minnesota a higher ranking. Here's the problem, Minnesota, and the reason why you're all the way down to number seven here. You dropped four spots for one particular reason. Yes, you took three out of four from Pittsburgh, the doormats of the league, but what do you do against Kansas City? What did you do? You got swept, and that comes with a price to pay. I'm sorry, Minnesota fans. They are a phenomenal team with a power back lineup and a great rotation. But when you drop three games in Kansas City, that's what happened. Coming in, number six, your Chicago Cubs. They're having a 3-1 week, taking three out of four from Kansas City. They unfortunately lost the weekend series against the St. Louis Cardinals. Not, not, not mean lost the game, but then they... They didn't play the games. The, the infections postponed the whole series, causing them to drop two spots from last week. Because even though they had a strong week playing the um, Kansas City Royals, they didn't get to play many other games. But unlike other teams with whom did not play very many games, and there wasn't much to write them against, the Chicago Cubs at least come in here with some degree of history and precedent by which to base this ranking on. However, they still fall a couple spots. Coming in, number five, your Cleveland Indians. After taking three out of four from Cincinnati and then taking two out of three from the Chicago White Sox, finished the week uh, three and four. And but despite that, they because they have done well overall throughout the year, and they did, and they had winning records against this both clubs, allows them to climb nine spots from fourteenth to fifth. Coming in at number four, your Atlanta Braves. Going three and four this week after taking two out of three from Toronto and two out of three from Philadelphia and winning that final finale last week. Allows them to climb one spot onto the number fourth spot. They're a strong team. They're doing well. They didn't have the most impressive week, but they are playing well. They are a deep team. It'll be great to see what they do against coming up this week as they go as they play the New York Yankees and they continue to move on with their season here. They're still favored to win the division. And they're still playing well, although they had kind of a, an average, a very mediocre week. Now, let's go ahead and get into our top three, our powerhouse contenders. As you can already tell, San Diego, New York, Minnesota, and Chicago have already been claimed. So, where do our top three teams rank? Now, one thing I've been hearing about the from ESPN and every other source is how they are de facto making 
the powerhouse Los Angeles Dodgers number one. The reality of the matter is I cannot give them those honors without earning it. And, and while they did do well, taking two out of three from San Diego and taking two out of three from San Francisco, San Francisco, they didn't do as well as the top two teams. They had a winning record. They won 4-2. They're a phenomenal team, and they're going to win their division by landslide. But this week, they are not number one. I would love to hear all your comments and thoughts about that in the section below. So, if neither L.A., Minnesota, New York, or San Diego got into the top two, who could they possibly be? Coming in at number two and rising four spots, you are Colorado Rockies! Having a, a very impressive week, going five wins and two losses, taking three out of four from San Francisco, taking two out of three from Seattle. They had a strong week. They came into this, this week strong, and they continued to dominate. They had one of the best weeks in baseball. In fact, the only team that has done better than Colorado this week is our number one and undefeated 7-0 and this week, Oakland Athletics. Congratulations, Oakland. You just did what the New York Yankees did last week. You swept your week, taking three straight from Texas, taking three straight from Houston, and finishing off the finale after last weekend's series. Your 7-0 performance far and away outshines all of Major League Baseball. Dodgers, Yankees, Twins, everybody. You had a phenomenal week and you deserve the top spot and the honors of the number one powerhouse team of week three. Congratulations to the Oakland Athletics for reaching the top spot. Now it's your job to keep it. Let's see what you can do. As you can see, our power rankings have been set for this week. Let me know what you think about what I think in the power section in the comment section below. I would love to hear all your thoughts about the different storylines for the teams. Where do you think your team rightfully deserves? Did I rank them too high? Did I rank them too low? Let me know what your thoughts. If you just happen to be coming across this channel on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.